and welcome back to my channel. My name is McPato. This is McPato PC, and in this video, I hope to help you guys answer a question that you've obviously asked yourself at some point if you clicked on the video, and that is specifically I tested Vega 64 in Crossfire. However, this would obviously apply to Vega 56 as well and the RX 500 series from Radeon. Uh, and the question is just very simple. Unfortunately, it's not simple to answer. Uh, with that said, however, there will be a timestamp in the description down below for anyone who doesn't want to listen to anything other than the results, which if that's what you want, <laughs> timestamp is down below. But I would encourage you to stick around for a few more minutes before just to get some more information because it's not as simple as is it worth it, yes or no. It depends what you're looking for, it depends on your budget and on your expectations, your technical comfort level, all of that factors in. So with that said, let's get right into it and I'll just give you guys a bit of my thoughts and my experience, we'll get some results and then we'll call it a day. Um, so again, like you guys probably have felt at one point or another, I've for a long time wondered what it would be like to have a Crossfire setup. I had an air-cooled Vega 64 and I came across a deal for a liquid-cooled, the stock factory liquid-cooled uh, Vega 64 in really, really great shape. It's second-hand but looks brand new and the price was unbelievable. So I knew that I could buy the liquid-cooled card for less than I could sell my air-cooled card. So I figured, you know what? I have nothing to lose. I'll pick it up. If it's not worth it, I'll get rid of the air-cooled card. And if it's great, I'll keep both. Uh, so I went ahead and bought the liquid-cooled Vega 64. And I just, I figured I'd need to upgrade my power supply as well. Right into it a little bit. Sure enough, my 850 watt EVGA G3 Supernova was not going to cut it. So I bought a Corsair HX 1200i power supply and this has obviously a cost incurred with it which you need to consider in your decision. Uh, so I did get the power supply. Uh, I set up the cards. That was relatively straightforward. My motherboard is the, uh, the As ASRock uh, X470 Tai Chi. And so it's got the proper configuration. I was able to set those up no problem. Uh, once I started, pretty straightforward. The system recognized uh, two cards, things like GPU Z. Uh, very easy to pick which card you want to look at in Radeon settings. Very easy to tell which card you're on. You can configure them, overclock them, undervolt them, whatever you want, very easily. The same as one card for two. So straightforward so far. Uh, so, so far we've bought obviously two Vegas and we've bought a power supply. So that adds up to a lot. But prices are coming down. So I figured, you know, if Navi's performance is lacking or prices are too high, whatever, Maybe this is an option for, for me, right? I love games like The Witcher. I'm hoping Cyberpunk supports Crossfire, etc. And a lot of newer games, Vega does great on, but I have a 3440 by 1440 monitor. I like to play at ultra, more high at the minimum. So lately, games like uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, uh, The Division 2 does run pretty well, um, but Again, not as fast as Division 1, so I figured some games, you know, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, so on, just give it a little boost, a little something to give it some life. Maybe I wouldn't need to upgrade my video card for a couple years, depending on scaling, of course. So I started with uh, some performance numbers uh, in benchmarks or synthetic tests, and those really went well. Um, I'll put up a chart at the end here, but just to give you guys an idea, uh, the worst scaling I got was in Firestrike, the regular Firestrike. 
Uh, and that was a 61% scaling or improvement versus one Vega 64, which is uh, excellent. And that's obviously, I think, being held back by my GP, my CPU rather, which is a Ryzen 2600. So a lot of these scores probably would have been significantly better with a, a 9900K or 9700 or 8700. Uh, I'm waiting for Ryzen 3000 coming out next week, but that's a whole other issue. I had what I had available and this is what happened. So 61% um, and the best scaling I got was 103% and that could be because of the liquid Vega versus my Air Vega. All the testing was done on the single Air Vega versus the Crossfire. So um, that explains that, I guess. Now, moving into actual gaming, it was a different story completely. And for anyone who doesn't know, Crossfire isn't as straightforward as you play the game like normal. So you have different profiles you need to set up. One time setup, once you find one that works, if you can find one that works, you're good. But uh, it's not as easy as one card. So there's a lot of games that have an official AMD Crossfire profile. That's one option you can pick in Wattman or Radeon settings. You have There's a little box you click for which, which uh, Crossfire profile you want for each individual game. Um, some games there is none. So then there's like a 1v1 and uh, default profile, etc. There's five different profiles for each game that you can choose. And again, none of them are guaranteed to work. And it depends which cards you're using for Crossfire. So it might work on the 500 series, but not on Vega or vice versa. So you really kind of have to play around. So it takes a lot of time to get things running smooth, if at all. And sometimes you actually get worse performance. Uh, there are a couple games I got a lot of stuttering, etc. So I'm gonna link for you guys in the description below a website from Fandom that has a pretty extensive list of all the games that work with Crossfire. As well, they, in the comments section below, have tested some more, more new titles or newer titles that do not work with Crossfire. So there's a couple there that if you're wondering, they do answer, no, they don't work. Specifically the Division Two, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and Battlefield V come to mind. Metro Exodus as well. Um, so these are all games that really would benefit from Crossfire if it worked, but it doesn't work. So that's sort of the other side of this. And fiddling around some games, you have to actually turn off AA or anti-aliasing. Um, you have to use a specific one, MSAA or you know whatever, TAA, whatever it is. So for example, I didn't configure The Witcher correctly. Terrible stuttering mess. Then I went back, read the notes in the configuration um, commentary on a separate website that's linked on this page that I have linked down below and it said specifically turn off AA. Okay so I did that and actually worked great and actually The Witcher is pretty impressive on Crossfire but uh, with that said I chose uh, about 15, 16 games that I wanted to run in Crossfire. Uh, and of those, only 10 actually worked. And of those 10, we'll break down the actual performance increase down below. But uh, they range from yeah, mediocre to actually pretty impressive. And if everything worked as well as the top four, uh, I would say definitely Crossfire is the way to go. Um, but games that didn't work off the top of my head, for me, which are on the list, mind you, The Division, I couldn't get to work, kept crashing, and like 
locking up. Um, Metro 2033 was a stuttering mess, just horrible. Couldn't couldn't even look at it. And uh, Deus Ex: Mankind Divided, which was supposed to be like a superstar, so pretty disappointed there. But it's just to show you. You can read that it works, you can read that it works well with someone else, get the, the thing set up and realize it doesn't work for you. Um, so that's another consideration. I mean, you're looking at Canadian dollars, a thousand plus dollars to set up this system, including the power supply with used Vega cards. And it might not even work, you know, half the time, if not more, depending what you play. Um, and that's kind of the thing. If you play a lot of older games, you don't need Crossfire. I mean, the Vega 64 does a great job all on its own. If you want to play a lot of more new titles that are graphically demanding, you would love Crossfire to work. It just doesn't. So, yeah, it's kind of hit and miss. With a couple of notable exceptions uh, in terms of modern games. So let's take a look at the chart. <coughs> So as you can see, I've got 10 games tested and uh, three synthetics. So starting out with the games ranging from anywhere from four, five, seven percent to as high as 75 and 86 percent with The Witcher 3 and Strange Brigade. So. You guys can obviously pause this, look at these numbers if you want, but uh, I put little asterisks there beside what I call or consider uh, acceptable in terms of uh, performance increase when using Crossfire. And of the 10 games I got to work with Crossfire, 10 out of 15, four of them had what I would consider worthwhile boosts to uh, average FPS. It is worth mentioning, however, that the 1% lows and 0.1% lows uh, didn't really suffer uh, all that much. So the experience was rather smooth any time Crossfire did work. It's just that getting it to work is sort of the challenge. And then looking at the synthetics here, uh, clearly Time Spy. 96% uh, increase in performance or scaling. Fire Strike, 61%. And again, I think the uh, the Ryzen 2600 is the bottleneck there because when we went to Fire Strike Ultra, it actually went up 103%. Basically, is it worth it? Depends what you're going to play. Um, I don't know what happened with Stranger Brigade, but 86%, I think it was scaling amazing I, mean, I was pushing nearly 200 fps average on ultra 30, 3440 by 1440 and that's what all these games were tested at 3440 by 1440 ultra or high um, another one that didn't work sorry just gonna add it was ghost recon wildlands couldn't get that to work it was sorry it worked but i didn't see any increase in performance so i didn't include it um, so that was disappointing as well, but at the end of the day, I decided for myself it's not worth it, and I actually sold my Air Vega, and I have the Liquid Vega now in my system, and uh, I'll do another video on my my reasoning there, or cover the the Liquid one or whatever. But just wanted to give you guys some info because we're gonna get. Navi announcements very very shortly at Computex next week Sunday which is like four days away as of right now so pretty soon and um, yeah I think if you have a Vega card Vega 64 Vega 56 or Radeon 7 I don't think Navi is gonna bring anything more to the table uh, maybe better pricing but they're gonna be hitting our RTX 2060, RTX 2070 performance. Um, so that's pretty much where we are with Vega 56, Vega 50, uh, 64. So 
Uh, if this is something you're interested in, if you play a lot of games that are on the list that you're going to check out in the link down below, could be worth it for you guys. You know, you've got a Vega already. You can pick up a used one on eBay for a good price. You know, in the States, maybe $290 to $380. In Canada, from $375 to $450-ish dollars. You know, if you've got a big power supply already, for the price roughly of a Vega or a Radeon 7, you could have a Crossfire. So, it is also very, very power hungry. <laughs> if you're running two air-cooled cards, it would be quite loud, quite loud, uh, especially the blower cards. Temperatures were up a little bit as well. So. That's going to conclude the video. Hopefully you guys found something useful. And uh, if, you, if you run Vega in Crossfire, why don't you leave me some comments down below about your experience, what games you found work really well, and help the community out uh, with uh, some information there if, you, if you'd like. If you like the video, hit the like button. Definitely consider subscribing to my channel. And I'll be back very soon with another video. Until then, bye-bye.